Again, good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's edition of the OTC DIHAN webinar series. This one entitled Weld Sensing, Closing the Loop with Robotic Welding. My name is Mike Monin. I'm going to be your host and guide along the way this morning as we dig into the options that exist uh, to add sensing to your welding robot system. We do like to keep these things uh, as interactive as possible. So right off the bat here, we're gonna have a little bit of fun with our first survey. Really focused on intelligent robots. And in this case, you know, those that exist in the movie world. So we've got a few good ones there. Hopefully some of you old folks like myself will recognize Short Circuit. I don't know that Steve Gutenberg is in many movies anymore, but nonetheless, that's one of the choices. Of course, my favorite being Star Wars, but let's get those votes in and see what your guys' favorites are. And let's take a look at those results. So quite a few of you are fans of Short Circuit. So I went out, let's hear it for the 80s. So with that uh, movie robot lead in, uh, we all want a welding robot like Bernie here. This is Wally's buddy from the movie, the Disney Pixar movie. And uh, that's dedicated to the task of efficient welding and is fairly autonomous and capable of adapting to changes in the weld joint and the part along the way. Uh, but in fact, Bernie, Wally, and the rest of those movie robots are, well, fictional. So today we're gonna lay out the facts uh, when it comes to options for uh, sensing with your robotic welder. And there'll be more survey questions along the way, uh, giving you the opportunity to interact uh, with us here at Dihan and the rest of the audience. So I do encourage uh, those uh, interactions as well as we'll have a question and answer session uh, at the end of the session today and a final survey when we wrap up. So everything we're going to cover here also will be recorded and made available for you to review. So Everybody strap in and let's get going. So right off the bat, uh, what is weld sensing, right? And this, like those movie robots, are uh, robots with the ability to both touch and see what's going on in the working environment. More importantly, focused around the weld joint itself. Uh, very often that means automatic compensation by making adjustments to the taut positions to keep the welding wire into the root of the joint. And if and when the joint moves, the robot needs to move to match so that the wire is always aligned with the root of the joint. And if you can keep the wire in the optimal joint position, all of you that know our Welby product know that you're gonna get very good weld results if you can keep the wire where it belongs. And the whole idea with this technology is to reduce and eliminate uh, you know, downtime due to you know, uh, the weld process acting up when you can't maintain position. So, so why don't we just apply this technology to every welding robot? Well, that's probably something that happens in the future as these things get more intelligent, computing power improves, uh, we learn all about these technologies that can learn from their previous mistakes. So, But there are many reasons why you don't put this on every welding robot, and those reasons are spelled out here. We will address those along the way from you know the core of all of this stuff, which is justification and cost, down through the impact on cycle time, and maybe even limitations uh, to what can be provided because of the geometry or access to the joint. And with that, let's move into our next poll question. Uh, and this one is 
for all you folks that are doing robotic welding out there. What about your application requires compensation? And there's a number of options there from you know finding the part initially uh, all the way through being able to measure the joint and look at gap within the joint and maybe even compensate for that gap within the joint within the welding process. So really interested in what you guys see as the challenges out there that this technology could assist with. So and let's take a look at those results. And far and away, it is the joint feature and variance part to part. So this is common, right? Even though we live in a world where we've got plasma and laser cut parts that are going through you know, CNC press breaks, giving us very precision components, there still is variation in material that leads to variation in joint fit up. So we all need something that helps us compensate for that. And we'll talk about these really four key technologies that are available for sensing the weld joint. And let's take a quick look at what we're talking about here. So we have everything from the low cost touch sensing on the left to what I would consider higher end laser camera scene tracking on the right. Of course, we can see the cost variation there as well as some of the advantages, including what works on aluminum and what doesn't what is easy to maintain and what requires more of a skilled trades technician. Um, and then the disadvantages uh, being in some cases impact to cycle time, uh, cost, maybe reduced access to the joint. We're gonna come back and take a look at this at the end of the session today, but I wanted to put this up there right off the bat uh, so we can begin to get a sense for what the impact is with each of these technologies. So just to give everybody a bit of a primer on weld sensing, uh, there's a variety of uh, solutions that this technology provides from simple position detection before you weld. So going out and seeing or feeling the part to see where it's shifted to part to part through what most people consider the holy grail of weld sensing, which is seam tracking. So as you're welding, constantly being in a mode where you're looking ahead on the joint and seeing what's coming so that you can be constantly adjusting. And then something that you'll see we have capability with, with a couple of uh, these technologies, and that is actually measuring the geometry of the joint itself. Uh, what's going on with the shape, the gap in the joint, uh, and being able to adjust the process to ensure uh, the maintenance of good welds within that changing joint geometry. In particular, we're going to be talking about something we know very well, and that's our own product. Uh, so that includes product in the touch sensing through arc, seam tracking, uh, laser spot sensor, which I like to consider touchless touch sensing, and then the uh, laser seam tracking of our FDQT. And we'll get into the details of all those, so you don't need to focus too much on what's presented here. But you can see that there are choices to be made, right? With every uh, pros and cons chart like this, there's going to be uh, some choices and decisions that have to be made along the way. So let's take a look at uh, the first one of those, and that is touch sensing. How does this stuff work? Well, really, it's a continuity sensor. It's looking for closing the circuit. Of course, our weldment is grounded, and then we're applying voltage to the torch, which conducts through the weld wire such that when we're not contacting the part, we do not close the circuit. 
But once we do contact the part, we short circuit and we're able to detect when that trigger happens when we go to max current during that short circuiting. So in essence, we can tell the robot controller when we've touched something through this technique. Um, let's take a look at the two versions of touch sensing we have. We have a low voltage version, which operates off of 50 volts DC, and a high voltage version, which operates off of 400 volts AC. Uh, that high voltage version is really for extreme situations where you have rust or scale built up on your steel. That's going to limit uh, the ability of that electrical contact to be made. So by going with higher voltage, we can conduct through that bad material. It also gives us the advantage of going farther with our setup. So if you're working on, say, one of our slider robots that moves 12 to 40 meters on a track, uh, that means your lead is going to be much longer, typically 1.5 times the length of your track. So you need maybe this capability to go beyond 49 feet. But more commonly, you're using the built-in version, which is the 50 volt DC version, and uh, that is built into our FD series robot controllers. Both of these have you know, decent accuracy, uh, plus or minus a half millimeter, so not terrible. Then how do these, uh, how do these work, right? So typically you're moving, searching into the product. If my finger is the wire and my hand is the, the weldment, we're gonna move in and search at a speed that allows us to detect when we've closed the circuit. And when we do, remember that a robot is essentially a reverse coordinate measuring machine, but it still knows exactly where it is in world coordinate space. So we record X, Y, and Z of when we make contact with the part. We compare that to where it was when we taught the original uh, weld and then we know what's the difference between those two. That's how much we need to shift uh, the uh, program to be able to put the weld down in the right spot. So we show a two direction search here. So we're finding both the vertical element and the horizontal element on the bottom here. And we do that with two separate searches. So because we have to search twice, think about the time impact with that. So that is why you've got to figure in additional cycle uh, for your part-to-part -part tack time. So this does take longer because just every surface you go to find is going to take more time to search. So, And with that, let's get into our third poll here. What do you feel is the biggest advantage of touch sensing? Touch sensing? And we covered uh, many reasons why touch sensing is good for you from the fact that you don't have anything hanging off the periphery of the torch, so that gives you easy access to the joint and the, the weldment itself uh, through the value that this provides and that it's a very low cost for the performance that it delivers. Let's take a look at what you guys think. So pretty even there with value being the the biggest advantage, but uh, that delivering or eliminating limits to what you can get in and access is another big deal with this. All three of these are really good reasons why you would want to use TouchSense, but I agree with you that the two you've picked here are two very good reasons why you would choose TouchSense. So let's move along and look at our next technology, which is through arc seam tracking. And this one is really uh, goes back to your high school physics when you were learning about electricity, how this works. And really, it's based around Ohm's law, which you see up there in the upper right hand corner. So we know that as resistance changes, uh, current also changes in an inverse amount. So as resistance goes down, current goes up and vice versa. So this really works based off of weaving within the joint. And while you're weaving, you're monitoring that weld current. 
So the side to side weaving motion through a fillet weld, as you get close to the weldment, your uh, resistance is going to drop because you're closer to the work. And as resistance drops, current goes up. And then as you get over into the joint, you have more resistance because the wire has to travel farther to contact the weldment. And with that increased resistance, current is going to drop. So as we monitor current through that weave, we can tell pretty precisely where the joint is centered and allows us to make corrections to stay centered within the joint. Bet you didn't know you were going to have a physics class today. Um, so what is what weldments are supported? Well, one of the obviously straight lines are pretty easy. They do need to be 50 millimeters or more because it takes uh, two weaving cycles for uh, this technology to snap on to the weld. It needs that much information to get started. When you're talking about uh, diameters and radiuses, uh, there is a limitation there of 50 millimeters in diameter and 25 millimeters of a radius. So you can't really make very tight turns with this because of the delay in processing that happens because you're looking uh, you know, two weaves essentially behind where you are with the data that you're looking at. Also, if you're trying to detect a corner, you need to detect that using another approach, most commonly touch sensing to find the corner to know where to start. Once you get started, of course, this technology snaps in and goes. And then the last one there of the sort of sine wave, as long as you stay uh, within a 10 degree angle of those curves that you're making, it can, it can keep up weaving back and forth. And here's the details of the technology. I will point out that this does not work on aluminum because of the, the impact it has on weld current. Um, just doesn't make it feasible. But many uh, welding modes are supported here. I will also point out that AC MIG is not supported. So going electrode negative uh, takes uh, through the arc seam tracking out of consideration. It's also important to know that your welding arc and weld puddle have to be stable for this approach to work. So if you're trying to apply this to a application where you don't have that dialed in, it is, it's going to struggle. But if you are able to make good welds, this technology is pretty much always going to work as long as you're within the constraints of that last screen that we looked at on joint geometry. The other nice thing about this approach is that it essentially teaches itself everything it needs to know. So to set it up, get your material out there, typically a coupon with a straight line weld on it of enough distance that it can grab uh, process information, welding process information as you go through a test weld. An image you see at the bottom there, uh, although it doesn't look like a great weld in certain spots, that is the through arc seam tracking challenging itself. Even on a perfect fillet uh, joint like that, it tries to go off center just to be able to get a range of parameters that it can use to guide itself on, on the actual welds. So. Very good technology if you have a stable process. So our next survey here, our next poll is, what do you feel is the biggest advantage uh, of seam tracking technology through ARC specifically? And as we saw with touch sensing, you know, unlimited torch, torch access is a big deal, but it's maybe the simple aspect of through ARC seam tracking that makes it attractive, right? If you're able to uh, keep things simple and reliable by welding on steel and having the torch fit, this, this technology is going to work for you. And let's take a look at what you guys think. 
And it's a pretty even tie between uh, that compensation for joint motion while you're welding and the simplicity of this approach. If you can get it to fit, it works. Um, certainly, this is the first technology we've looked at that can compensate while you're welding. So when we looked at touch sensing, that's all sort of touching the part before you even begin to weld. With this, it is intended to correct itself as the part potentially changes. You apply heat to it, uh, the part material expands and contracts in different ways and it changes the weld joints. So we'll see some more technologies coming up here that are uh, specific uh, to being able to track live welds. Um, so this I'm going to say is sort of the improved uh, version of touch sensing and it is using a laser sensor to essentially measure the distance to the part surface. So it is touch sensing without the touch, hence my term for it being touchless sensing. This delivers much better accuracy than touch sensing. If you look, it's, it's more than twice as accurate as touch sensing was. And it delivers a pretty sizable uh, working distance field of view uh, for detecting the surface of the part. There's two ways to mount this sensor. If you want to give yourself more space around the weld, you mount it up higher off of the torch, as you see on the right there. But when you do that, you do lose the section range. It drops from 200 to 100 millimeters. But this is a laser sensor, so it is pretty reliable technology for measuring distance. There are three search modes. We're gonna go into each one of those in the next few slides here. The first of those is a groove search. So you start uh, out of the joint, moving across the joint surface and looking at the profile of the joint as you scan on by. And you can see in the graph here what the joint looks like right on the screen of the teach pendant. So you don't have to pull up any other device to see what's going on with this sensing technology. It's gonna convert that profile data into joint feature locations. And you can see on the right-hand side, the type of joint geometries that it can detect. Every one of those red dots you see is a point that you can select that will feed back to the welding process. So you can use that particular feature location to drive your uh, corrected weld path. And this is the poor man seam finder. Now I say finder versus tracker. Finder is really going out and finding it before you weld. Tracking is actually finding the seam while you're welding. That's the difference between those two pieces of terminology there. The next approach is a one direction search. And this is really uh, moving down toward a surface very much like touch sensing. When you achieve the reference distance, it records the location of the robot. So as you're searching down, much like touch sensing, but instead of contacting the part here, you can do that without coming into contact. So when you're doing this way, one search gives you one point X, Y, Z. Two searches, you know, say vertically and horizontally gives you two points X, Y, and Z. That creates a line. And if you can do three searches, you can define a plane. And you'll see how that factors in when we talk about pattern search next. But this mode is really, like I described it, touch sensing without touching the part. And then the final search here is for fillet lap and uh, butt joints, but these are canned search routines that use either four points, five points or three points, depending on the uh, type of weld you're talking about. Let's use uh, this uh, butt joint here as an example. So first and foremost, we come down on the part here, that's search number one. 
once we've found the surface of that upper piece, we scan from left to right to find this vertical edge right here. We can continue off the upper piece uh, here to go down onto the lower piece. And then that gives us our fifth point. Then we return back to find the edge of the upper piece. And that gives us X marks the spot here. So five total points delivers uh, the joint off of that lap. So very easy to use and the fact that these are all built in and these all use combinations of those one direction and groove searches that we talked about earlier. And let's head into our next poll here. Oh, I'm sorry, I have a demo video for you before we roll into that. So let's take a look at this. And let this play out. This is a demonstration of our touchless contact sensing with the FDQD product. So it's going to come in and find the rung of this step using a five point search. Finding the rung and the base tube in order to update or update the position of the weld seam and then weld on both sides of the rung. Now we'll see it in a close-up view over here. So sweeping in to find the edge, then finding the surface of the rung. And then the surface of the base frame in all five points that it's finding to offset and rotate the weld joint and then to weld both sides. So that gave you a, a nice view of how uh, this technology works in a real and factual way on an actual part. But I thought I would show this as well. I got my little laser sensor here to demonstrate for you really what this technology works on. You can see my little spot there. As I come in closer, that laser pointer is shifting, in my case, right to left. As I move farther away, it's shifting left to right. So that's really the approach that this technology uses having a laser sort of off angle to the sensor, which would be straight vertical above and detecting that positional change of the surface. And let's get into what you guys think about this particular uh, non-contact touchless sensing in our next survey. And there's some good choices here. Essentially, uh, if we compare this to touch sensing, it is faster and more accurate than that approach. Uh, this is the first one we've talked about that does work on aluminum, so that's pretty important. And like I mentioned, this is the poor man's groove finder. So um, we're gonna talk about laser sensing with uh, our seam tracker next, but this is a viable way to look at groove and let's see what you guys think about this particular technology. So far and away, uh, the fact that it's faster and more accurate than touch sensing um, is the clear winner here. And I would have to agree with that result. Last one we're gonna talk about here is laser seam tracking. And this is looking out ahead of the weld joint as you're welding and predicting where the joint is going uh, to find uh, the optimal location. This does work on aluminum, so there's a number of advantages we're gonna get into here. But before we do that, let's take a quick look. I think it's easier to show you what is seam tracking than it is to talk about it. So here's the demo. 
So here we see our FDQT product. This is what people commonly refer to as laser tracking or weld seam tracking with a camera system. So as you can see out front of the torch is a laser line that's imaged by a camera that's built into the sensor. And from that, we get the joint geometry and that allows the robot to do what it's doing right here. And that is compensating for the weld path. In this case, it's a translation and rotation, but it can be uh, any of the six axes of the robot and it will track the feature, in this case, the weld seam. So you see it offset over and then begin to track that weld path actively while moving along, typically performing the weld. So tracking and welding are occurring essentially at the same time. So there you got a good look at what seam tracking is, and that was our FDQT laser sensor. Um, this is our newest sensing product, came out, I believe, 2018. Uh, in the Atlanta Fabtech, we introduced this product. Um, it does enhance productivity, very fast ability to track 200 centimeters per minute. Uh, this is controlled much like what we saw with the touchless sensor. This FDQT is controlled through the teach pendant, so it's very easy to set it up, no PC required. Um, it does enhance weld quality because it has the ability, which we'll demonstrate, to measure the gap of the joint and a simple way to adjust the weld process to make sure that that joint gets filled. And it's very uh, simple and easy to maintain. So the consumable components on this are easily removed when servicing. So this is set up through a teach pendant and that is active in real time monitoring. So you can see the screen on the right is live when the sensor is live. So you can see what's going on uh, in real time with no PC required as a typical sensor would require some setup from that remote device. There is a built-in library of joint profile geometry. We'll go through how that sets up and uh, what exists within that library, but there's 12 unique uh, joint geometries in there. So this really does deliver on the promise of simple setup. When you're setting up uh, joint detection, in this case, we have a lap joint here. You choose from the library of weld joints that are available. And there's a, always a visual in there, like you see here. Easy to recognize which one is your joint geometry. And then there's three simple parameters that get set up to dial the process in. And we'll go through that here. So the in the case of this lap joint, the first one is on which side uh, is the upper plate on the left or right side, very simple, a zero or one. The second parameter here is the thickness of the upper plate in millimeters. So popping that in. And then the third one here is which point of these four would you like the process to return for where you want the weld wire to go? You've got a number of choices uh, on that lap joint geometry. And then you can see here, including lap joint, all the other types of joint that are supported. There's 12 in total. I'll jump to the next screen as well. And you can see that. So a variety of joint geometries that are built in with a library that makes selecting and setting up your particular weld joints very, very easy. Uh, this sensor also includes intelligent technology. So as the welding joint and its gap are vary and they can be detected by this sensor, 
uh, and based on those measurements, adjust the welding conditions. So here's an example uh, where we run different welding conditions depending on the varying thickness of the joint, including if we go beyond two millimeters of gap that we actually air out the system and alert the operator that there was a problem with the part being out of tolerance. And you can see how that matters as this joint gap expands here in the middle, you get you know, blow through there on the weld by just keeping the same process, but by adjusting the process as you go to the bigger gap and then down to the smaller gap, you can achieve a very good weld joint. And with that, let's dig into some uh, a demonstration video of this technology. And here we have a demonstration of that intelligent technology, the ability of our system to take feedback from the sensor and apply it to what is a varying gap in the weld joint. On the right, you're going to see here really open loop welding. So this is conventional spray arc, uh, short circuit um, without any kind of feedback whatsoever, not using the sensor, not using our advanced technology. Second thing you see here is our synchrofeed technology. So this is our low spatter and gap filling technology, which uses a modified short arc but delivers a very clean weld and covers that gap quite handily. Now we're going to make a gap on an even larger part so exaggerate the scenario here the situation and let the FDQT sensor do its job um, and adapt to that varying gap along the way. So as the gap varies, the sensor is picking that up and adjusting the weld process parameters to create a good weld. So into the largest part of the gap and then out of it again to where you've got a good fitting lap weld. And there's the end result, a very good weld across what is a pretty large gap. So let's take a look at everything now that's available with the FDQT sensor. So here we're going to be tracking at about 60 centimeters per minute with a weaving frequency of three hertz and that weaving amplitude is two millimeters. So it's looking ahead, doing the initial find here on the joint and then weaving while it's tracking. And of course, it's going to work past these stitch welds here without any difficulty maintaining uh, that joint. So again, looking ahead while weaving, and there you get a good shot of the profile of that structured laser line. And it's keeping it right centered in the sweet spot of that lap joint. Next approach here is maintaining torch angle. So here we see it tracking, actively tracking the weld joint. Now we're changing that weld joint. So initial find snaps onto the joint and then actively tracks it. No additional teaching required here. Now we're adding an angle to the material. 
And the goal is to rotate the joint to remain tangent to the surface. So here we see it pivot over to maintain that tangent surface and actively track the joint. Now we're going to look at that same uh, torch angle control as it works through three different angles here. And it quickly adjusts again to remain tangent to the surface of the part. So now rinse and repeat with some different surface angles. Again, actively tracking while maintaining a tangent torch angle and making the adjustments necessary automatically. Now let's look at that on a curved surface. Here we have uh, an arch cast part, one meter 60 on the uh, curved surface. So this will not only track the seam on this casting, but also maintain that tangent torch angle. So as it's going up and across, you can clearly see it adjusting torch angle to remain tangent to the surface of the part. Aiming right down the center of that casting. Now we take a look at start and end point detection. So it's going to search in to find the start point that's at 50 centimeters per minute. And then it will speed up while it's on the part uh, to find the end point, And it does that at 100 centimeters per minute. So take a look at this. First coming onto the part at 50 centimeters per minute. Find that first corner. That's where it would begin welding. Now looking for the end point and at a higher speed, 100 centimeters per minute. Now we'll challenge that by moving this box. Again, no reteaching here. That 50 centimeter per minute search into the first corner. Once it's found that, it will now speed through the part at 100 centimeters per minute to find the end corner. All right, and we're back uh, with our final survey here. Um, what do you feel is the biggest advantage of laser seam tracking? Got three key choices here. This is the fastest sensing solution that we offer, and it includes that active compensation for your targets that move. And with the built-in library of 12 types and the teach pendant interface, it is very simple to set up. But I'm very curious what you all think. So let's take a look at those results. And that active compensation for moving targets is, is a clear, clear advantage of this, followed by that the speed of this product and its ability to react to what's going on within your parts. And let's uh, now review uh, everything we've talked about today with weld sensing, really trying to help you make the informed decision here, uh, comparing costs of each of these technologies. These are the add-on costs for us. So for example, to add through arc tracking to a FD series robot, 
it's seventeen thousand um, dollars as well as the advantage that exists uh, pointing out that the two technologies on the right with the touchless sensing and laser seam tracking work on aluminum the other three do not um, that Touchless sensing is very good for thinner material, and we saw how it is much more accurate than touch sensing, as well as faster, uh, with no need for clipping the wire, which is something I didn't really get into on the touch sensing, but you do need to have repeatable uh, location of the wire stick out for that technology to work. And with that, that really concludes uh, my presentation today. Certainly appreciate your uh, attendance and your interaction. Um, before I get into your questions, if there are any, I'll be getting those in now through the questions tab. But uh, I will say that our next webinar will be on the floor from Fabtech in September where we're gonna have no less than five brand new product introductions to show you all. Um, from robots to uh, ways to teach the robot to some advanced welding technologies, including our latest generation of welding power source. So I'm pretty excited about what we're gonna to have to present to you at Fabtech. And that's the next time you'll see uh, our one of our webinars as we're going to cool it for the summer. But uh, I don't really see any questions coming in, but I will talk about one that came in yesterday, and that is would through arc seam tracking work on that flighted part that we saw a demonstration of in the laser seam tracking? And the restriction there is really the a diameter of that part being too small to support through arc seam tracking. Uh, the, the joint would change too much for it to be able to compensate. So the, the diameter of, of the curve of that part is the one that would not allow it. So, and I got one more question just popped in here. Can the FDQT work on TIG filler configuration robot? It really is only built for MIG welding. We do have another product, which I didn't bring into today's presentation for TIG applications, um, but it's more of a uh, through arc type of process where it's looking at the weld parameters, uh, the weld current and voltage results as your TIG welding to keep you uh, within the joint. So thank you for that question. And one other question here. Uh, if we use a two-way external access positioner, uh, is it supported or not? And uh, all of these technologies work with auxiliary axes uh, through our synchromotion uh, approach. Uh, everything that moves within the robot work cell that's controlled by the FD controller uh, is monitored by the same controller that's doing the sensing. So yes, you can combine uh, those technologies. Uh, I think you saw in the, in the flighted part we were actually using a uh, headstock to rotate that part to keep the weld joint uh, vertical down. So yes, absolutely, you can combine those technologies. And with that, that's all the questions. So remember, either I'll see you physically at Fabtech or I'll see you virtually in our next, uh, in the webinar series, which will happen uh, at the Fabtech show in September. So thank you for joining us and have a good day.